Mic check one two one two. Yes, I like to welcome you again to this episode of me of a lazy producer. Yes, as you all know, we producers most of the time we like to be lazy and just do nothing, especially when the creative juice is not flowing. But yeah, this was one of those days, so I decided to play some game, whooping somebody's on the line, you know. So then it finally struck me that. Yes, that I can actually make the best beats I've ever made in my life. Like, get out of this zone. Yes, so if you are like me, then watch this. How to get out of your head and get in your zone. Today, we're going to be talking about the myth of a lazy producer. Hmm. Take your time. Don't rush. It's going to be a really quick one. The most creative people are often the most people that have to deal with laziness. So if you find yourself procrastinating more than the usual, you know, we all procrastinate when we feel like, oh, something is not as important or I'm not even in the right flow. Um, for this um, yet. So for me, I tend to procrastinate more when I know, oh, I'm not in the right frame of mind to do this right now. Creative people oftentimes are the ones that deals with laziness and procrastination. If you find yourself procrastinating too much, is it that because you are really, you are a very creative person or you are just lazy? We creative people generally, we deal with something I like to call, it's not, I don't know if it exists, but something I like to call a new idea syndrome. It's a special one where you get bored of everything you are doing. And instead of you, you know, taking time to try to figure out what to do and how to get back in your creative flow, you just leave it and then you start doing something else. And I know what most people want to do in this case is tell you, oh, take a break from the music and then you come back to it, you know, you flow with uh, all different types of ideas but i realized that every time i take a break from the music i don't know if it happens to everyone but every time i take a break from the music let's say i go one month without making music when i come back to it when i come back to it it's like i don't know how to walk a board anymore i don't even know how fl studio yeah so it feels like i almost don't know anything about uh the music anymore it feels like instead of that bringing me close to the music it took me further back away from the music so i already shared tips on how to become a better musician in 2023 if you've not seen that video check here so here are five tips to keep your creative juice flowing in today's crazy world understand yourself or know yourself as a musician you know you see many people live their life on and on without knowing themselves you'll be surprised to see a 50 year old man who still knows little or nothing about himself. Know yourself and know your ability. As a musician, you take on too many tasks on yourself because you are talented. Even I am guilty, you know, of this. When you take on too many tasks, then along the way, you get overwhelmed. You start to lose the energy. You start to feel like, oh, I don't think I love this thing the way I loved it in the start. You start seeing 10,000 reasons why the task could not work. So what do you do instead? Don't take on too many things. Shift things. Know exactly what you should be doing part time. Of course, everyone's case will be unique. So know exactly what you should be doing part time. Don't put yourself too much on edge if you know that you get overwhelmed easily. Of course, you should always try to set yourself, set things in order, start something to finish before even trying to take on another one. So yes, number two, don't do what you should delegate to someone else. Like I said in the tip one, the fact that you can do everything does not mean you should do it. You know, you can use that creative flow somewhere else. Do something that to increase you both in knowledge and in power. Go oh, yeah. <laughs> People have come to me to mix a song and knowing how important um, music is to me and uh, production is to me generally. I said, oh, yes, let's do it. So I took the song and in the midst of the song, I started seeing many things that the producer didn't do right. So two things, I could easily just call the artist and tell the artist, oh, tell your producer to refix this, refix that. But I could tell that the knowledge of the producer, that was where... You know that was the peak for the person because you know uh 
a lot has gone into it and they've been going back and forth trying to fix it. You know, they, they thought it was an issue with the engineer, but it was an issue with the producer. So I went back into the session, rearranged, we made the entire song without taking credit away from the, from the producer or taking credit away from, you know, how he made the song. I remade the entire song. Why? Because it's important to me. You know, if I had delegated to say, okay, yes, Mighty, you mix this. Um, so, so, so and so person, you master this. It would have been easier for me. I would, I would have used that time to make something else elsewhere. I'm not saying you should do that, but see how much time I spent trying to perfect the song. Usually when I'm mixing, I don't do any other thing. I have a week that is dedicated to mixing. I have a week that is dedicated to just production. I have a week that is dedicated to me just to looking for new sounds, you know. So if I just delegated it and just oversee, okay, let me know when it's done. So when it's done, I can just take a listen and say, oh, yes, if it can be delegated, do it. It's another wing of collaboration. Third one, which is my favorite right one keep a schedule or timetable you know this has helped me greatly before now i used to do things as they come so if you give me something say oh chris uh we have this uh mtn blah 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 thing that we're doing that we need you to work on every other thing is paused for that thing so if another one comes after that one every other thing is paused for that one so i see myself trying to juggle between oh going to this place to finish this job trying to come here to finish this job at the end of the day you have plenty of things undone and disorganized so i started keeping a timetable here's a blueprint of what you can do you can create your own timetable according to your personal experience so for me making music days are monday tuesday wednesday so i make music on monday tuesday and wednesday so anything outside music i'm not doing for the three days you know so on thursday i'm shooting so thursday i'm shooting uh, my youtube so this was filmed on a thursday i shoot all my content for the month if i can go for the month i do if i can go for two if i can do two three in that day i do but usually i shoot my tiktoks my um, instagram reels all those short form content for music for tutorials like this for um, my my students, you know. Fridays, I'm replying emails, I'm checking comments, replying comments, engaging with people online, you know, chatting, having meetings with my manager, discussing about my academy, having meetings with my admins, you know, for Chris Beat Music Academy, which is still on, by the way, you can still join. So, and on Saturday, we edit the videos, you know, so we edit the YouTube videos, the TikTok shorts, the music um, content for uh, maybe I'm promoting my music. I'm always promoting my music anyway, so you should do that too. So on Sunday is posting. So on Sunday, I post on YouTube. Mind you, on Sunday is for posting and also for scheduling. So we schedule, uh, we, we schedule the things that should go, the shots that should go, the reels that should go, the TikTok that should go. So I'm not always on my phone trying to check things, you know, um, apart from when I'm doing live, because, yeah, I started doing live recently on TikTok. So if you're not on TikTok, you're missing a whole lot. So these plans, they are dynamic, they are flexible. Number four, have friends that you admire in your field. You know, this one took me a very long time to adapt because I'm someone who is perceived to have a lot of friends, but I have a lot of followers. I have a lot of uh, people who aren't necessarily, you know, in my line of work, you know. So have people in your field that are your friends. When I mean your friends, people that you can talk to. Coming up as a young music producer, I did not have friends. The only friends I had back in the days were Reason, Logic, FL Studio. Yeah, the only friends I had were Reason, Logic, and FL Studio. And um, I spent most of my time trying to learn things on my own. If I had friends, it would have been easier to learn some things, you know. I I had friends in real life, but they were not interested in the things that I was interested in. So yes, have music friends in real life that you can talk to, that you can ask questions, you can brainstorm together, you know. So if you're struggling with a thing and you're trying to get something done, your friend might have passed there or your friend might have done those things before and it's easier for the person to just tell you, oh, I got this by doing this, this and that, you know. So wherever you are limited, your friend can always show you better ways to do it, you know. It is better to ask someone who has done a thing that you are trying to do and succeeded in that thing to ask them oh how can i do this 
than for you to try to figure it out yourself. Figuring it out yourself can work. You know, um, at the end of the day, you still get there, but it's just easier to ask someone that say, oh, please, how did you get to this place? If you can, have friends who are like research junkie like myself, you know, so if you don't have friends, reach out to me, I'll be your friend. So yeah, like myself, I have friends in the production world that still calls me to you tomorrow, you know, to say, when I see the call, I know this person is calling me to ask questions. It doesn't, I don't feel bad about it because anytime I need them and I reach out to them, they always come through for me too. So yes, but five, which is my, another absolute favorite, remember to spoil yourself. So the reason why you are not you are feeling down about everything is you are not celebrating yourself enough you are not um, appreciating yourself you know enough you are not appreciating yourself when it comes to celebrating yourself i think i'm the ogre quata, 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 quata of them all in this scene because always 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 try to spoil myself you know even though some people might still argue that I don't do it enough. Spoil yourself as a musician. We always have that one thing we're looking at to say, oh, if I have this, my workflow will be better. If I have this, I'll be able to do this, this and that. If I have this, those things, save money to get them. If you feel like, oh, I need to travel, travel. If you feel like, oh, I need this new gear, get them. They will, they will come back to you as an investment to yourself, making your workflow easier, making your life, even you, your, even you yourself, making your life better. You know, for me, what I do is I get new gear, you know. I, if I like this, if I get a new gear, okay, most of you have no, most of you have seen this, but most of you have not seen this. So I wanted to get like a board to have to have that, you know, um console feel. So this is good. This is a this is a control surface. I'm going to get four of this. It's going to fill the whole table. But I got one to just see how it works. Since I got this, if anybody sends me a mixing job, I'm eager to jump into it and just start uh from the gain just start gain staging before even throwing any effect on there you know just to make sure that i can hear things properly and this helps me to do that easily so yes remember to spoil yourself if it's a new software if you feel like oh when you're making beats oh you've been eyeing on miss fair if you want arcade get them subscribe for those things that will boost your creativity that every time you think of making beats you are not just down you are up and you want to start you know making those beats that you said you wanted to start making so get creating yeah get them because me i realized that every time i get a new equipment or a new uh, plugin for the next one month i'm learning a thing or two about that plugin and i'm putting all my mind in it that okay yes while i'm learning a thing or two i'm also working on myself looking for better ways to make my creativity to make my creative juice more you know i'm digging deep into things that can how to make the work more interesting to me yeah if it, if it be a gear get it if it be a plugin get it if it's a shoe get it if it's a wristwatch get it there are a lot of things that you don't need to learn how to do that you just need to get a gear that can do it perfectly for you you know so yes get a gear get a microphone you know get a new micro i have a new microphone coming i have a microphone that is um almost seven thousand or eight thousand dollars in the studio i have a new microphone that is for fifteen thousand dollars that is coming so it's really not about it's really not about the gear i'm just saying this is what gets me going you know so anytime i have something new I'm, I'm gingered to work. Just do anything that makes your workflow easier for you. So yeah, with that said, um, there you have it. Uh, the myth of a lazy producer and how you can conquer it. So try out all these tips today and thank me tomorrow. And I'll see you in the next class. Love.